Hey, this is Lee. I want to do a quick video about something Jesus said. If you look on the screen there, Matthew 24, 35 to 39. He said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating drinking marrying giving in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and knew not until the floods came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be so how is this going to relate to the last days we're going to get into that so here we go so for example a, a man comes up to a pastor and he asks him or the pastor asks the man he says do you know the what the two biggest problems of today are and the man says I don't know and I don't care and the pastor said you're right on both accounts that's exactly what's wrong with today people don't know and they don't care and this is exactly what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about as in the days of Noah now as you know we're in a time now where we're we're filled with all kinds of things and it's really confusing but we're going to get into it. So how do the two relate to one another? So let's go down through the list. Um, now you can find most of this in Genesis chapter 4, 5, and 6. So I want to get that out there so you can look this up. So how are the, what are the similarities? Some of the similarities are secular philosophy that contradict the Word of God. And this is exactly what we're going through today. Whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or anything, there's always philosophies on there. As of late, as of today, a matter of fact, I was thinking of a scripture, and I went to look in the Bible and couldn't find it, and it was something that I'd seen on one of the social media things, and I got it mixed up in my head. So if you automatically think that you're a ecclesiastical giant and you can't be affected by philosophies, you can. Well, this is exactly what was happening in Noah's time is they had their own religion, their own secular beliefs, their under own understanding. And because the Bible says that the thoughts of men were continually evil, and that's why God destroyed the earth, except for, as we know, eight souls. Right? Yeah, eight souls. I had to think a minute. So, secular philosophies. What else is a similarity to... The days of Noah compared to the last day. Scientific progress. In Noah's day, there were Nephilim, men of renowned power and wisdom, fallen angels, as you already know. For the time was, for the time, it was the day of, of enlightening. Just like today, we've never seen a time in history where there's been more enlightening wisdom, well, not lack of wisdom, but understanding and technology is booming. And this is exactly what has happened then. The time when men learned about metallurgy. See, in Noah's day, remember the uh, Tubal Cain? He was a, a maker of metal, and I'm paraphrasing that a little bit. But the technology was booming. There were cities being built. There were, there were fantastic things for the time in the days of Noah were happening. And you can find in Genesis 4, the man Tubal Cain was the one the, uh, the metal and then there was farming and agriculture great cities being built occult sciences i mean the fact that noah could even build the ark let you know that they were in for their time a technological boom just like today number three social plagues violence you can find it in genesis six eleven. The earth, was, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, killing unborn babies just like today. There was violence on every hand, and if you watch the news, you know that we're in a time where there's violence everywhere. Everybody's angry. There's shootings and slayings and, and, and murders, and like I said, the unborn babies dying by the thousands every day. See how this, this is, relates uh, to, from Noah's time? to the last days or even right now that's how we christians know that we're in the last days number four the days of sexual perversion now we know that the nephilim came and seen the daughters of men and slept with them and then they had babies and those babies became men of renown now in genesis 6 5 to 11 and god saw the wickedness of wickedness of men 
was great in the earth, and every imagination I thought of his heart was only con- evil continually. The days of imagination and fantasy, that's exactly what we're, we've got going on today. The Internet itself is full of porn, pornography, uh, even down to the kids, pornography in cartoons, pornography in everything, TV and violence and, and all the stuff, murders. There, there you, can literally, you can't literally find a TV show today that doesn't have murder, death, uh, adultery, all that, and it's being fed into the minds of people. So we are g- slowly growing to the last times when man's thoughts are going to be continually evil. Uh, it was a time of the first Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, and God destroyed the cities of the plains for the same sin in the time of Abraham and Lot. See Romans chapter 1. The, the, their sexual perversion is running through the streets like open sewers into people's homes. In the 80s, there was just in the sewers. In the, in the 90s, it started to slowly come along. In 2000, 2017 now, you can literally find porn for free on the Internet all the time. And that's a sign that we're in the days of Noah now. Number five, selfish prosperity. In this time of prosperity and selfishness uh, and selfish gathering possessions for themselves, the judgment against those who don't have riches or choose not to have riches is the plan of salvation. We don't want big riches and we don't want to be selfish. We know what Jesus said, that it was the poor that had the gospel preached to them. In the times of Noah, everybody had everything and then there was all the other stuff on top of it. And today, now, we're in the same time because people own things. They want things. They want more cars, more houses, bigger houses, vacation properties. They want new everything. And they, they're they never settled or <laughs> they're never content with having food and raiment and a place to live and loving one another. It's always possession, possession, more and more and more. And the more they want, the more they get. Number six, solemn preaching. Noah preached. That the rain would fall from the earth, or the rain would fall and the flood would cover the earth. Now, how do we know that Noah was a preacher? And he was, and he was preaching the gospel while he was building a boat. 2 Peter 2, 4-6, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and eight persons, a preacher of of righteousness bringing the flood upon the earth of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly you see what I'm saying the Lord absolutely showed us that the days of Noah would be like the last days and I'm here to tell you that that today we're living in we are very close to those same last days we're right there yeah and we're doing the same things but the church and the people of the world they don't see that they don't understand that this is coming to pass uh let's move on to uh let's see number seven nope that was it number six Uh, number seven would be sudden panic on the day the rain started to fall, remember Noah was building the ark and he was preaching according to Second or Second Peter. He was preaching while he was doing it. So sudden panic. This day's coming. When the Lord chose this day, he shut the door up. Now, if you go back to Genesis 7, so let's go over here and I just want to make sure we get this. Genesis 7, 1 to 6 right here. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for there, for thee have I seen righteous bef- before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, at the male and his female of the beast that are not clean by twos, the male and his female. Of the fowls of the air, the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth 
40 days and 40 nights, and every living sustenance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto the Lord, as the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood the waters came upon the earth. Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with them into the ark because of the, of the waters of the flood of the clean beast and the beast that are not clean of the fowls and everything that creepeth upon the earth there went into went in two and two unto noah into the ark the male and the female as god hath commanded noah and it came to pass after seven days but that the waters of the flood were upon the earth in the 600th year of noah's life in the sixth month or the second month in the seventh day of the month the same day were all the found the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights and in the self same day entered noah and shem and ham and japheth the sons of noah and the wi noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark they are and every beast after his own kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind every bird and every of every sort and they went into the in unto noah into the ark two and two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life and they that went in went in male and female of of all flesh as God hath commanded him and the Lord shut him in this is what I want to pay attention to and the Lord shut him in so this day came and this day is coming for us as well Noah got the animals came and God said in seven days this is going to break forth the found the fountains of the earth are going to break loose and for the first time in history rain would fall from the skies and they thought he was crazy. They wasn't. They wouldn't listen. They said, "No, there's never rain from the sky. There's no way that this is going to happen." But Noah, being a man of God, he preached and told them that this day was coming. Now the day comes down to the end, and they all go in the ark. Now picture this in your mind. They all walk in the ark, and a great door. The Bible says right here, and the Lord shut him in, and it locked. The Lord shut him in. And there was no way to open it. Now imagine they're sitting inside and they're getting everything ready. And all of a sudden they hear the sound of rain and water swooshing. There must have been people all over the land around where the ark was. Probably heard the rain coming and ran out to the ark and, and begged for Noah to let them in. I, I've often said this and I feel in my heart that Noah and his family probably heard some awful sounds the day that God shut them in the ark. And time for them was going to be no more. Can you imagine what it was like for them as they heard the waters push the boat and the boat shifted and all the animals probably made noises as it scared them or spooked them a little bit. And then all of a sudden, all the screams and the voices went silent. And for the next 40 days and 40 nights, there would be silence. You know, in the last days as we're coming up here, the God's going to shut up a different ark. And that's in the rapture. He's going to call the church up. And for those of us that preach the gospel and beg people, please, 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 be humble your heart. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. And let him come in your heart. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior. A lot of times people have rejected that. But there's a day coming like in the days of Noah when that day is going to happen and, and God's going to shut it up and there will never be another chance to be saved again. And we need to be have that in our minds so that we know this day is coming. Jesus said, let me close with this, in Matthew twenty four thirty six. But as of the days of the day and hour knoweth no man. There's no man that knows, not even the angels in heaven, but the Father only. But as in the day of Noah he were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus is coming back, and when he comes back, it's going to be some great cries. We read in the scriptures where the lost would run to the mountains to hide them from the face of him that's come. Who him? Jesus. When he comes back and he calls it out, when this thing is all done, people are going to run to the mountains and beg them to fall on them 
because Jesus is coming back as a conqueror. He's not coming back as the lamb on the cross. He's not coming back as the lamb that was born in a manger. When he comes back this time, he's coming back as a conquering king and one that will rule righteously and judge the people. This time is your time to repent and ask God to come in your heart. Don't wait until the last minute because I can promise you this. When it comes down to the end, and you, and you wait to the end to ask God to forgive your sins so that you can go on partying and do your thing, I can promise you there's a time coming that you're going to be too busy dying to ask for forgiveness. Dying is a full-time moment, and it'll take every bit of energy you have just to die, and it'll be over, and you'll go to hell. But you don't have to today. Jesus, he's opening a door of knowledge and wisdom to us to look and see the day that we're time that we're living in that it's going to be this way according to scriptures. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Will you be shouting when he comes? When you hear that blow and the, and the noise of the east and he rolls back the sky, will you be celebrating at that split second that it's happened? Or will you be running for the mountains and the rocks? Will you be like in Noah's time running to the boat to beat on the boat to say, let me in, Noah, I believe now, let me in. But it was too late. They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and they were doing all these things. And God shut the ark up, and only God could open it back up again to let Noah and his sons and his daughter-in-laws out. It was only God. One day, Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? Can you see that the signs of the time that we're living in now are, are beginning to match up with the days of Noah? If you can see that and you know, then you're wise, and you are on your way to heaven if you're living right. If you can't see that, then you're in trouble. And you're probably going to be left out unless you repent. Today is the day of salvation. That's my video today. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be as in the days of Noe. I love you with all my heart. No matter who you are in the world, be blessed in Jesus' name. We'll be back soon with more videos. And we're going to get on deeper into it. I love you. Be blessed. Bye.